Marketing Monday, today's topic, the best acquisitions of all time. Let me give you an example. Amazon bought Twitch for a billion dollars, okay? Now, that was in 2014. Six years later, has that been worth it? How much is Twitch worth to Amazon now? That's the idea, okay? Number one, this is acquisitions, not mergers. So for example, um, Exxon and Mobile merged to make Exxon Mobile that dominated the oil market for years and years and years and made a fucking absolute gargantuan ton of money. I don't include that. Number 10 of the best acquisitions of all time, I am of course speaking of, this one's gonna surprise you. Can anyone guess? Boner, no. Fortnite, no. Bungie, number 10 is Bungie acquired by Microsoft for a mere $30 million prior to the launch of the Xbox. $30 million is nothing in business. That would be nothing if the company didn't generate much return. But even if you only count the profits on I mean, the revenue from Halo games and, and merchandise and stuff alone, that's $5 billion. And to put that into scale, I created this chart. This is Master Chief sized at $30 million. Okay? Look how cute he is. This is Master Chief sized at $5 billion. <laughs> <laughs> I had to cut off this part because it lags my computer. This is to scale. You're probably thinking that's enough on its own to be in the top 10, but I actually don't think it would. But I'm including, and the reason I included this is because my honest opinion and theory is that from a marketing POV, the Xbox would have died. If it weren't for Halo, we would not have had an Xbox 360 because the only thing that made this a viable competitor to Sony and Nintendo out of the gate was that they had an absolute killer app in Halo. So that's why it's my number 10. I think Bungie was a fantastic acquisition. Number nine, number nine, greatest acquisition of all time, Disney buys Pixar. Do you remember the movie Brother Bear? You might not. Whether or not you know these films, they f***ing, sorry, <clears throat> they sucked. They did not do well. Now, Disney animation in the 90s was on a massive tear. They did Aladdin, they did Lion King, they did Mulan, they did Hercules, they did uh, Pocahontas. They did all of these really big, big, big hits, okay? Movies that did hundreds of millions of, in worldwide box office that captured the imagination of kids everywhere that were selling a ton of merch. These movies had cult followings but they didn't do the same. And Bob Iger looks around in 2000 to 2004 in that era. And I remember in the book, he says he was looking out at a Disney parade and he noticed there wasn't a single character in the float that had been made in the past like 10 years. It was all like Simba from the Lion King and Aladdin and the Little Mermaid. And it was like all of the iconic characters that everybody loved were from old stuff. And all of their new shit, like all of this, wasn't really hitting. Disney animation was fading and it was hurting the whole company. Disney was really like sliding into a possible irrelevancy. And he was worried because the things that were doing good in this time, uh-oh, uh, Toy Story, Bugs Life, Finding Nemo, those movies did have huge franchises. Those movies were amazing. That was what Pixar was doing. Bob Iger proposed to Steve Jobs, Disney buying Pixar. And at first he says, no, hell no, of course not. There's no way it would make sense. But then they, they warm up to it. They start going through ideas. And then 7 billion reasons later, <laughs> which is the purchase price, they got Pixar. Making Steve Jobs absolutely insanely wealthy because he bought the original starting of Pixar for absolutely nothing. It's always crazy to me that like in his off time, Steve Jobs founded Pixar. Lucasfilm, George Lucas's company, had a... Uh, computer animation division that they spun off and they sold. And Steve Jobs bought it and turned it into Pixar while he was fired from Apple. And he, in that time, founded Pixar and ended up being massively successful. And it was like a side gig for him and he was CEO of Pixar, crazy. Pixar movies now make about a billion dollars a year. But the rough estimate is that for every billion dollars you make at a box office at Disney, you're making two times that on merch and theme parks. There's, there's more money in the toys. So they make about $3 billion 
per movie. That's this is a conservative estimate. Because really, without it, Disney wouldn't have turned around at all. Disney was in a slide, and this this turned everything around. Not only did they hire Pixar to like um make great movies, but they hired the talent from Pixar to run Disney animation. There's pretty much no doubt in my mind that Frozen would not have been created if they hadn't bought Pixar. Pixar changed the whole culture of Disney and ended up leasing to the massive success that is Frozen. Super successful. Great job by Bob Iger. Smart of him to see that value. But here's the deal. Here's the deal, boys. It wasn't his best acquisition because number eight here on my list is actually more valuable than Pixar was. If you can believe it, a Marvel movie may also makes as much as a Pixar movie about a billion dollars per year. But here's the thing about Marvel. The difference is Marvel puts out more than one movie a year. Pixar at best is doing about one a year. Marvel's cranking out two, three, <laughs> sometimes four. And Marvel at this point has already generated more money for Disney than Pixar. And it was acquired later and for less. So, you know, Pixar costs seven something billion. Uh, Marvel costs about half that, about four. But what's crazy about Marvel is how smart it was. I think Pixar was a very easy one to see. I think you could see, okay, Pixar's doing great in animation, we're doing terribly. Marvel, at the time it was acquired, had one movie in Marvel Studios, Iron Man. And most of their IP, a lot of their most famous heroes, were already licensed out. They were in long-term 10-year contracts with like Sony and other companies. So even if you buy Marvel, Half the heroes you don't even own yet. You can't use them. They, they thought super long-term. They built this whole expanded universe and it led to an insane, insane, insane amount of money and insane amount of merch and insane amount of like relevancy and a worldwide box office gross of 2.797 billion. That is three-fourths of the purchase price of Marvel itself. They bought Marvel for 4 billion and then Endgame alone made $3 billion back. Number seven is, I think, the best media acquisition of all time. Some of you guys are not going to know what this is, but I'll try to explain it in terms you can understand. Sports, a.k.a. pick up a football and watch ESPN. ESPN! This one is the oldest one I think on my list. It was done in 1984. ESPN... Uh, was purchased for a paltry $188 million in 1984 and is now worth roughly $31.2 billion. <laughs> ESPN, I mean, I can't even scale that one. I could do the Halo example, but again, this was $30 million to $5 billion. I To go to $30 billion would crash my computer. ESPN is worth so much more when they were acquired and it's because they became essentially the de facto uh, way that people interact with sports for, for decades now. The amount of money is sort of think about. Yeah, again, I, I wanted to include more scale examples because it's hard to think like $30 billion, how much is that? It's so much money. $30 billion is so much money. And to make $10 billion in revenue a year is crazy. So, <laughs> they, yeah, they bought football. ESPN starting to slide because everyone's cutting cord on cable and they're starting to interact with sports in new ways. The internet is really disrupting ESPN. They should just buy the internet. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> what if they just bought the whole internet? Holy shit. PayPal. PayPal, poggies. Although we're all cash app stands now, huh? What happened here, Elon, huh? This is Elon Musk at PayPal when it was acquired. This is somehow him fucking 20 years later. <laughs> Where'd the hair come from, Elon? The number six acquisition is Elon Musk acquiring these hair plugs and a good night's sleep. <laughs> that has made him the second richest man of all time because he's way easier to look at. Um, PayPal was acquired by eBay. This is the power of eBay. <laughs> it's a tough... Fit. Let's just see if we can put this on. I'm going to rip it. <laughs> I'm going to rip it. Uh, so I guess I did not realize it was a youth medium. 
and not a regular medium. I will have to slim down a bit. I'll have to stop eating so many McDoubles. <laughs> and uh, it was bought for 1.5 billion. It's worth about 50 billion right now. Uh, that, that's revenue. I'm sorry, 50 billion is revenue. PayPal is currently worth 250 billion. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you guys get the scope now? This student has become the master. Google buying Android. Everything cratered and now the world is literally divided between Android and iOS. <laughs> uh, so if you want to put anything out on mobile, you have to use Google Play or you have to use iOS. There is no other option. Is it duopoly? Hey, iCucks, look at the graph. Well, it's not, listen, <laughs> I hope there's people that are not in a deep online war over what mobile iOS you use. <laughs> At the time, uh, they got acquired by Google for $50 million, which is just nothing. It's just nothing. Now they are worth an estimated and part of their contribution to Google, $72 billion <laughs> alone. Probably more, but let's just, that's, that's conservative estimate, $72 billion. And that's why Zuck, like, fears Google. <laughs> Zuckerberg is trying to own VR because he thinks VR is the only thing that can break away from how much Google owns phones. This is another one <laughs> from our boys at Google. They just keep on hitting. Uh, and this one you're probably not gonna recognize, but I, I actually had to include it. I didn't wanna include it originally. And that is Google's acquisition of DoubleClick. Now let me explain what DoubleClick is in case you're like, who megalol? Who megalol, excuse me? Uh, what about Fortnite, you're saying? That's got to be bigger than DoubleClick. <laughs> this is the Google Pie, okay? This part is YouTube. This part is what's called Google Network. And then this part in yellow is search advertising, okay? Which is what DoubleClick allowed them to do which became incredibly lucrative and also let them run ads on other people's sites. It became like this foundational network that every site plugs into and now people can buy ads for any site. It's Pac-Man. <laughs> they acquired Pac-Man. And for acquiring DoubleClick for a mere 3.1 billion, it is now worth roughly 126.4 billion. <laughs> Uh, when I read about it, one thing that was interesting was that they said, um, <laughs> it's very unlikely that if this deal were to come by today, that the government would even let it through <laughs> because it gave Google such a monopoly over online advertising. Yes, sir. Three in a row Google acquisitions are three of the greatest of all time. This is of course where you guys watch your Jake Paul YouTube, baby. By the way, if you're not subbed, the HREC on YouTube, why don't you take a moment and hit that subscribe button? It costs you nothing. 60% of my viewers are not subscribed. We're on pace to hit 50,000 subscribers in my first five months of uploading to YouTube. I'm extremely excited. Uh, I've had a lot of fun with YouTube and it would be awesome to me if I could hit 50K by December, by the end of the year. Uh, so if you get a chance, it costs you nothing, but make me really happy, hit subscribe. YouTube is just dollar for dollar a f***ing crazy, crazy, crazy Bears acquisition. I mean, YouTube is the internet for a lot of people. This is it. This is video on the internet. Yahoo exec rips Google for overpaying for YouTube. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man, that aged well. You f***. An idiot, you nimrod. Within a few years from this, Yahoo would be defunct completely. And then Google would have YouTube, which is like so insanely profitable, worth about $86.2 billion right now. The estimate I've heard is that YouTube was its own company. It would be worth over $150 billion. You're telling me you wouldn't pay $150 billion for the rights to Baby Shark? Gangnam Style? Despacito? Yeah, of course. So that's why this is easily the number three greatest acquisition of all time. 
a lot of these acquisitions, especially the biggest ones, are companies that are fucking huge and strong, realizing that something's about to disrupt them. So Google's like, oh shit, the future of the internet is not search, it's video. And if we don't invest and own YouTube and build that out, we could get made irrelevant. Now, number two is of course the Louisiana purchase. How could I not include it now? I just didn't want to put it so early. You guys are all right. Every time you guessed it for all 10, it's definitely not where all my virgins in chat feel bad about their lives. Instagram. Instagram was purchased, forget this, a single $1 billion, $1 billion to between 200 and 300 billion dollars probably greater because instagram is essentially the most dominant and influential social platform currently if you want to advertise online you have two options you go to google or you go to facebook you advertise on search and web or you advertise on social twitch was also bought for one billion dollars around the same time two companies made acquisitions okay facebook bought instagram for a billion and amazon bought twitch for a billion now, six years later in 2020, Instagram is worth hundreds of billions of dollars. It is the biggest social platform in the world. It has a massive growth and it makes a ton of money. Twitch still loses money and is being sued by a million record labels. <laughs> the greatest acquisition of all time. What is number one? Is it Minecraft Poggies? Is it Fortnite? Is it Nvidia acquiring Atriac? from Twitch for a six figure salary? Yes, it is. Number one, the greatest acquisition of all time is when Apple acquired this guy and his company, his company called Next. Apple's acquisition of Next. Now, let me tell you the story because I don't think Zoomers know the story. People think uh, Steve Jobs just founded Apple and stayed with Apple. No. Here's what happened. Steve Jobs founds Apple. And then he uh, doesn't know what he's fucking doing because he's a kid. It starts doing pretty well. It goes public and it's worth a billion dollars. And he realizes he's not cut out currently at his age. He's not cut out to be CEO. So he goes to Pepsi and he tells the CEO of Pepsi, do you want to sell sugar water or do you want to change the world? And so he gets the CEO of Pepsi to come over to Apple, John Scully. And then that guy and Steve do not end up getting along. And they force Steve out of Apple in the late 80s. He's forced out of the company. And he ends up uh, buying what would become Pixar, which is like the genius thing to do in your off time. And he starts a company called Next, a company that was going to compete with Apple and make computers. The problem was, like most things Steve Jobs does, this shit was way too expensive. <laughs> The next computers were way, 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 way too expensive and nobody wanted to buy them, okay? But they had really, really good operating systems. When you're acquiring a company, usually you're acquiring them for the product. But sometimes if they have talent you really want, the people you really want, like really talented engineers or product people, it's called an aqua hire, where basically you're hiring, you're buying the company just to get the people. And so what they did was Apple spent $400 million, $429 million. They got Steve Jobs back in the company. He made, they made him interim CEO. It's funny. I found some old articles from the time where they're like, Steve Jobs is going to be the interim CEO, but we're definitely getting a different CEO. So don't worry. He's just going to hold down the fort for a little bit. And then he held it out until he died. <laughs> once he was in, once he was back in, he never let go. 97, right around here, they acquire Next and get him back. And around here, he becomes CEO. So right around here, he dies. But all of this comes from the iPhone and a lot of the iProducts and stuff that he started, all right? Because the scale of this number is so high, you can't really see the changes here, but Apple's revenue was going down. So it was a company that was on the verge of death. It was doing terribly. So when he joined, it truly did turn around a company that was failing. They spent $400, $400 million to become a $2 trillion company. In conclusion, the number one acquisition of all time, Apple acquires Next, getting Steve Jobs and a better iOS. And that, my friends, I believe, well argued, well accurate, are the 10 greatest acquisitions of all time.
So honorable mention I did not include. <laughs> Mixer acquiring Ninja. <laughs> that one was a real hit. 